this episode of The Excursion, I'll be challenged with fishing, beekeeping, and horseback riding all around the nature-filled rivers, bays, and uncrowded shores of Gulf County, Florida. And if I succeed in these exciting challenges, I'm rewarded with a one-of-a-kind personal chef experience at our very own Gulfside Getaway. Let's get started. This place is magical. Gulf County, Florida, fittingly located right on the Gulf of Mexico, is a special place for so many reasons. Our excursion home base is right on the rolling dunes overlooking the peaceful Gulf water. Rocco's Retreat is a newly built four bedroom, four bath house loaded with a chef worthy kitchen, cozy bedrooms, spacious state of the art bathrooms and a serene private atmosphere, which at times makes the Gulf feel like your very own. So after getting my feet wet, I was done walking for now because it's time to ride. Just a couple of miles down the road from Rocco's is Salinas Park, where I found my new equine friends at the Rocking M Ranch. Rocking M Ranch. Yeah, Rocking M Ranch. This ranch looks a little different than some of the ranches I've been to. Oh yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> this is beautiful. Tell me what we're doing here. Oh, well, we're doing we'll take a ride down the beach. Um, we've been doing this about 24 years between me and my wife, and uh, it's just a good way to come down here and see the beach and enjoy it. And you don't have to have a lot of experience. It's just a walk, really laid back, really easy ride. So this is my office. This is nice. my view every day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey there. Who's, who's this? This is Silver. Silver. He's being, being the hog of the camera here. <laughs> oh, I like Silver. What kind of horse is this? They're all quarter horses. Quarter horses. He's a paint, but they're, that's his color. But the breed's a quarter horse. And this is their retirement? Yes, this is their retirement. So like I said, all these guys are a lot older. Um, they're in their late teens, into their 20s. All they have to do is be able to walk, so it's a good retirement. You know, as the horses get older, a lot of people don't want them anymore. They don't have a lot of use for them. They want to build a run and you know go blazing through the woods and things like that. Yeah. Well, these guys, as long as they can walk, this is their job and they spend the rest of their life with me. Coming in hot, coming in hot. Was this a race? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one, <laughs> woo! Challenge complete, Wes. From the Gulf beaches across the peninsula to the pristine St. Joseph Bay, where Captain Jordan Todd of Saltwater Obsessions was standing by, waiting to take me and the crew on a fishing excursion through this unique and important ecosystem. Tell me about this bay. This is a very special place for you. It is. This is St. Joseph's Bay. I uh, grew up out here fishing it. It's one of the only pristine bays in Florida. And pristine means clean water, grass flats, high salinity. It holds a ton of life, a ton of marine life. And it's these, this whole area. I mean, it looks like it would be real deep out there, but it's, it seems to be grass flats. The grass is what drives everything. All your organisms come from the grass, whether it's the food that lives in the grass, feeding off the grass, and you have larger bait fish that eat that stuff, and then you have the big predatory fish like your trout and redfish, flounder, that eat those. So if there's no grass, then it doesn't hold any, any life. And if it just dies off and goes to sand, then nothing's gonna be out here. And it's easy to understand why Captain Todd is so passionate about this estuary. St. Joseph Bay has the richest and most abundant concentrations of marine grasses along the Northwest Florida coast, and if we as visitors don't respect it, then the changes could be devastating. And it's real important, being a boat captain, to know what you're doing out here. What would you tell people that are coming out, hey, I want to rent a boat, go fishing? A little bit of education goes a long way on proper boat etiquette. When you see an area getting shallow or see grass, you know, trim your motor up. Tell me about the different charters that you can take and the, the fish you can catch. I know it changes with seasons. It but. does. You know, I kind of pride myself on being able to, to target anything from inshore trout, redfish, flounder, uh, triple tail, tarpon, to being able to go get snapper, grouper, king mackerel during the season, you know, summertime when it's in season. If people just want to go catch fish, then we can come out in the bay and trout and redfish. All right. What do we got here? I don't know. <laughs> 
not a trout, because the trout's gonna shake his head. He's got some, uh, I believe that might be a Spanish mackerel. He's got some sharp fins. Or a ladyfish. Ladyfish. It's a lady. They'll fly out of the water, won't they? They will. But they you, got a, you got a foul hook. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's why it's so tough. Hey, it's harder to catch them where they don't bite. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful with these things because as soon as you grab them, they're strong. They poop. <laughs> That's their defense mechanism. As soon as you grab them, they spray it everywhere and they will they will mess up a boat in a hurry. There you go. Watch out for the poop. Ladyfish. Strong fish. Now we'll let them go. What do you think, Wes? Nice fish? Nice fish. Yeah? Yeah. It's a fish. It's a fish. There you go. All right. Boom. There he is. Yeah. Big shark right there. So yeah. you might not have him for long. <laughs> trout. There you go. I got myself a trout. Hey, just flip him up here, too. Yeah. There you go. That counts, Wes. Yeah. It, it counts. That counts. That was a Hitting the fish. boat. That there you go. Fish. Good yes, job. sir. That was a Who's catching fish. trout? David. Thank you, Wes. <laughs> All right. Woo! Needed that. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. You see that? I call it a trout. We're not, not catching trout. We are bringing trout in the boat. Trout We're not plural. over with yet. I'm surprised that six foot uh, black tip right there didn't just. <laughs> Big shark. Didn't just eat him while you had him hooked up. <laughs> I love There's so much activity out here. Yep, We're seeing yeah. schools of jack, schools of black drum, tons of turtles. Look at that. Oh. I would throw it right in the middle of that if I were you. Yeah. yeah. Nice trout. Yeah. Yes, sir. Nice spec. All right. Keep him coming. Yeah, look, that one's got a shark bite or something out of him. Oh. Oh, yeah, definitely a shark. He survived that, but he couldn't survive Captain, Captain Todd. Well, he's gonna survive. He's yeah. gonna survive. I'm putting him back. He just lost that bass. Have you won a battle yet? Yeah, yeah. See that ladyfish? That was that was the catch of the day until he started catching a bunch of trout. What you got? Flounder? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, All right. Fatty. See him, Wes. He's right. Yeah. Ah, he got off. Shoot. Look at him right there. Yeah. He's right there. That's oh, so is that a redfish tailing? That's a shark. Shark. Oh, 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 he wanted, he wanted to for a second. Oh, that spooked him. He's right here though. I enjoy teaching my clients on the different fish and techniques and then also educating them on our area. Yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot being out here with you on what to do, what not to do. We've also caught a few fish. We saw a lot of fish, caught a few speckled trout. We, we did hook some flounder and they got off right at the boat. We saw one. You we see that flounder? We one? know for oh. a fact, we know for a fact we hooked a couple. We, we got off we right at the boat. Several. And then we landed some ladyfish and some speckled trout. Speaking of trout, and there's and one right yeah. there. There we go. There's one right there. Oh, you. Speckled trout. Classic example. And he is feisty. Feisty, guy. yeah. But that is a St. Joe Bay spotted sea trout. I feel this place is a, it's just, a, it's an ecotourism destination. Nature shapes the people and the people shape the nature and it's just this balance, this back and forth and give and take of um, you know, how, how we interact with our environment and how our environment shapes us. Local by association, we, we want our visitors to have the same magical experience that we have here every day. After catching a few speckled trout and enjoying the wildlife scenery of St. Joseph Bay, we ventured north along the Apalachicola River to the source of one of the river's finest gifts, the Tupelo Bloom, the nectar for the area's legendary Tupelo honey. 
And this white tupelo honey only grows along this southern Chattahoochee Apalachicola. That's right. That's right. That's so cool. All right, so I was wearing black, and according to Gary and Pam, I was going to look like a black bear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got, we got to zip this up, right? That's right. That now I'm right. a polar bear. And what we do is we just kind of let them know that we're here. This is the first time opening this Tupelo box. Looks good to me. What's your take? And? It tastes good. Here, y'all follow me. stuff right there. You did it, Wes. You passed the challenge. That's good. Yeah? You might have to take this mask off. Have you been stung like 10 times and just haven't told me? Or? I haven't been stung once yet. How about that? Don't jinx me. Yeah, I won't, I won't. Okay, now, grab that box. Uh, how much is that? Where do I put it? How much is it? Put it's, it right back. Tell me how heavy it is. That was probably about 80 pounds. 80 pounds? <laughs> no, probably, probably yeah. Ooh, yeah, got uh oh, they get you. Back up, he got back up, he back got up. Me. They got you. You got my black socks. They got your black socks yeah. right on the sock. Are you good? Yeah. See that? <laughs> I was just trying to take a good guess at how much honey I had in that box. You have a lot of honey. This frame is nothing but honey. Yeah. This frame is nothing but baby bees and eggs and brood. She'll put her honey in these frames on the outside so that as these bees are hatching, They'll be able to crawl up, get them something to eat, and go straight to work. It's amazing how used we get to the bees and how they get used to us, except for the occasional renegade who is possibly more confused than angry. Regardless, I was able to snag a few samples before we made our way to the honey house. Oh, how about that? Where we met Gary's partner in this sweet venture. This is our honey house. It's on the outskirts of Weewahitchka, Florida, which is the home of Tupelo Honey. So it's a great place to come in, harvest the honey, sling the honey, get it in drums, bottle it, and then it goes out to our local stores and friends and family that purchase and support our honey. There's a little bit to explain here when it comes to Tupelo. You know, people think Tupelo, Mississippi. Yes. But that is a different Tupelo. This is a very special, unique region right Yes, here. yes. The white Tupelo is unique to the Apalachicola River Basin. So just from the south part of Georgia to the Apalachicola Bay, it's really the only place that this particular tree grows, and it's right, right along the river. Why do they go to the Tupelo Bloom? It seems like t here, Tupelo is their favorite. And they do fly past a magnolia or a bay tree that has blooms on it, fly past other things. They just prefer it. I don't, they really do prefer it. When we return with Honey on the Mind, we journey to another Gulf County house of honey. I feel this place is a, it's just, a, it's an ecotourism destination. Nature shapes the people and the people shape the nature and it's just this balance, this back and forth and give and take of um, you know, how, how we interact with our environment and how our environment shapes us. Local by association, we, we want our visitors to have the same magical experience that we have here every day. Catching in the Gulf with Captain Todd, rocking the shores on an equestrian tour, and making a buzz with the bees of the blue-eyed girl, this excursion continues to impress. So now it's time for one more honey stop before we start chowing down. Smiley Honey does stock up on the famous Gulf County Tupelo, but they also offer drive-by guests a sample of honey varieties from all around the world. Weewahitchka. Yes, we are in Weewahitchka, and 
These are the honey varieties that we carry. We have about 12 varieties. We have three local honeys, which is the Tupelo, the Holly, the Wildflower. We have Orange Blossom, which is local and that it's from Florida, but it's from further south. Then we have other varieties from around the country. We have a couple of from Europe. We even have a coffee honey from Guatemala. Oh, coffee yeah. honey? Yes, uh-huh. How it, okay, are you tasting more honey? You tasting more coffee? What? Well, actually, when you taste that, you're not going to taste coffee. It has actually a smoky taste, but it does have a little caffeine in it, so. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. People can come here and visit, and yes. I see y'all have a little honor system outside. Yes, Tell me how that do. works. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We leave that out for nights and weekends when we're not around, and folks come and get honey all the time. It's We've had it out for years, and it's, it works great. Sample right. spoons. Shall we start with the Tupelo? Yep, absolutely. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and if it falls, I'm going to get it here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no honey on the floor. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's so good. Isn't that wonderful? It's so sweet. It's very floral. There's no bite to it. It really is perfect honey, and there's nothing quite like the Tupelo. The coffee honey here. Yes. <laughs> okay. Coffee honey. A little bit of caffeine in there. Okay. Oh, wow. It's mm -hmm. very different. Very different. Kind of smoky. I like kind of like that. Yeah, kind of a smoky caramel or apricot. Yeah. But you get that smokiness right away. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think it's amazing. These bees, they just go to these different flowers. Mm -hmm. They create such different... Yeah, and it's the nectar that determines the flavor and the color. And... Mm, I like that one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I might be uh, doing the honor system with some coffee, honey. <laughs> it's very mm. popular. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Coriander. That one. Okay. What, what do you recommend? I'm going to go with All your right, order. Well, let's do the coriander. Okay. This is really unusual. This is a spice, the coriander, but it's going to taste like coconut. Totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's like. Uh, co yeah, uh, beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like yeah. coconut. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's coconut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, how does that come from Oregon? You know, <laughs> so. Oregon coconuts known yeah. as coriander. Mm -hmm. well, since, right. well, since we're doing the coconut, let's do one that tastes like lime. This is the basswood. Okay, same with the beach theme here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from Michigan. <laughs> yeah, there you from go. Michigan. We're going all over the country here. Get a little lime taste in yes, there. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I like that it comes late. Uh huh. How is it lime? Like, I don't. Are know. there limes in Michigan? I didn't <laughs> no, think there were. I know. Are there coconuts in Oregon? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is this is crazy. These bees so are the amazing. Mysteries of the honey. Yeah. Guys, would you like to try it? Yes. Yeah. All right. All Come right. on. Here. <laughs> <laughs> All smiles after two sweet honey stops. It's time for the main course, a much anticipated voyage to the shipwreck. What's up? We are right across the street from St. Joe Beach. We give people what they want around here, and that's oysters. <laughs> we started serving out Apalachicola oysters, and we actually started out mainly as a steam bar and an oyster bar, and as, over the last few years have grown into a full-service restaurant with everything from seafood and steaks to oysters about eight different ways. Also, we've incorporated some other things that Gulf County is famous for, the Tupelo honey. Our version uh, is called a uh, bee sting shrimp, which is use, uses Gulf County Tupelo honey. Yeah, it's that combo of Tupelo honey and fresh Apalachicola. It's got a lot of heat to it. When you first bite in, you'll taste the heat. And that goes away, and then you get this nice little refreshing thing from the, the Tupelo honey in it. It's like a bee sting. Taste the heat? Yeah, I do. You described it very well. It's a popular one, isn't it? All right, we got oysters coming later. Oh yeah, all kinds of oysters. All right, what's this? This is the shipwreck. Some garlic, Parmesan, steamed, and then quickly baked. Okay. I like that, lots of garlic. You smell the garlic, guys? Yeah. Mexico beach. This is the Mexico beach. Mexican themed. Little spicy. Mm. Mm -mm. Oh, that might be my favorite. Oh, that's awesome. Guys, I might eat these. I might give y'all one tomorrow. Thanks for eating with me today. Right. Yeah. Thanks for giving me an excuse to eat them.
Uh, I feel this place is a, it's just a, it's an ecotourism destination. Nature shapes the people, and the people shape the nature, and it's just this balance, this back and forth and give and take of um, you know, how, how we interact with our environment and how our environment shapes us. Local by association, we, we want our visitors to have the same magical experience that we have here every day. Sunshine, white sand, bayside adventures, and a sweet, savory regional sampling of local goodness, it's now time for my excursion reward. And after a busy couple of days, we didn't want to travel too far, so our wish was granted. In fact, we didn't even have to leave our house, thanks to my friend, Chef Ian, and his mouthwatering catering service known as Your Table, Your Chef. Chef Ian, this is special. The crew and I have been staying here at Rocco's Retreat, right on the beach. This is a gorgeous location. We come back from fishing and boom, you're here. Already prepping everything. It's really exciting. Tell me what you do. What I do is I go into people's homes and prepare them whatever they want. Whatever they want. Whatever, and I mean the sky is the limit. Most of my clients can hang out on the beach or go out and go fishing and do whatever they want to do. And then when they come home, their dinner is prepared and I'm here to serve it on Good China and kind of bringing back a more formal fine dining feeling but in your own home. Very cool and all these houses for rent in the area along Cape San Blas, Port St. Joe, mm -hmm. this whole Gulf County region, yeah, the you, can, you can help them out, you can be there and be their chef. Mm -hmm. And see that's what's really neat, you know this area, you know the veggies that are around here, you know the fish that is fresh and so people can ask for suggestions. Mm -hmm. I do provide some menu guidelines and some suggestions. Say if you want grouper and it's in season, then I will provide it and it will be the freshest grouper you've ever had. Course number one. It's sauteed shrimp and a saffron cream sauce. Fresh local Gulf shrimp. They're brown hoppers that we got just this morning. Now we go to course number two. It's gonna be a Southern Comfort salad with organically grown, hydroponically raised microgreens. And it's gonna feature Tupelo candied pecans, fresh goat cheese, and pickled okra. Moving on, next course. The next course is gonna be sauteed black grouper. It's gonna be served with a lemon basil cream sauce over um, vegetable risotto. Yum. All right. Yum. All right. And it was swimming this morning, too. It's beautiful fish. That's amazing. All right. And now we move on to the final course. And the final course is going to be my own salted caramel chocolate mousse, a recipe that I invented. How'd you do that? Caramel. <laughs> just a drizzle. It just, oh my gosh. I'm afraid I'll mess it up. This Eat is it. beautiful. Dig okay. In. All right. All right. Dig in. So. Tear it up. It's that much fun. Mm. Wes, I'm sorry, this is the only one. I'm so sorry, I'm just gonna have to finish it though. This is good, oh, yeah, yeah, and there's those, but I was gonna eat those. <laughs> it's fair to say that this was a meal for the ages, and not one I could handle on my own. So the crew and a few Gulf County locals joined me for this Chef Ian Williams spectacular at my own Gulfside abode, Rocco's Retreat. Excursion complete, see you next time.